Hi everybody, I'm Donna Terrell and this is Terrell Talk. And once again, we're talking with Fitz Hill. He is a member of the Arkansas Board of Education, State Board of Education, and former president of Arkansas Baptist College. Thank you again for letting us continue our conversation. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about the mayoral race. I know at one point you were considering, you even told me this, you were considering running for mayor. But before we get in, into that, I want to talk about Arkansas Baptist College. There are some people in the community who feel, in fact, there was a petition, you're fully aware of it, that was circulating where people felt like you should not be on the State Board of Education because of your leadership at Arkansas Baptist College and the state of the college today. What do you say to your critics? Well, uh, I tell you, I don't really worry about stuff like that, Don, I'll be honest with you, because the proof is in the pudding. And 99% or 101% of all of that information was false. And uh, so if you can show me one thing that's, that's accurate about those allegations, then, um, uh, then I would say they may have some proof to it. But let me say this. If we've seen all the things going on in our community uh, each and every day, if I've done any one thing wrong, I wouldn't be sitting here today. <laughs> so I think you know that as, as a person of the community, if I, had, if I had broke the law, if I had done anything that was illegal, because I've been through three federal investigations, all right, and not one thing has come up that I've done anything wrong. And so when the state board examined, you, you don't think they investigated? All right, so what they call those, those are haters, okay? So I like, like the young people say, don't hate the player, hate the game. <laughs> I, I will, just one follow up, and I wasn't gonna bring up um, all of the allegations in, yeah. in that petition, but I, I will say, and we've done stories on Arkansas Baptist College, and I mean, they have definitely dealt with some issues, financial issues. Yes. Um, Historically. Uh, Historically, yes. correct, but mm -hmm. you were there for 10 years. Yes. So some of this, what you say, um, uh, came into play under your regime? Oh, but I think what we're looking at now is totally different than the allegations that were being talked about. What I'm saying is that there were definitely challenges, but there were nothing done unethical. There was no, no, no stealing, all those type of things. And, and, and the Department of Education and the people who supported us, if there had been something wrong, they would quit supporting us. The federal government has supported us. The state government has supported us. So the people that matter support us, mm -hmm. okay? So for, for the reasons, and, and, and I think you should look at the population of people that we serve. And here's what I would say. You know, it's very, very expensive sometimes to educate the least of these. All right, this is, we're not Harvard, we're not Yale, we don't have an endowment, but if you look at the people that we serve and how we've been able to help people, Donna, that's worth, to me, hitting the lottery. Okay, all right, enough said. Let's move on and talk about the mayoral race in Little Rock. You told me you were considering running for mayor. What happened? Why did you change your mind? I realized I wasn't a politician. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means I mean, you were just sitting here, the way you were just talking just yeah. a minute ago was almost like on the lines of a politician. No, no, it's, just, it's, it's, it's too many, it's too many variables in there each and every day. I'm a coach, you know, and so for the same reason that I took the job at Arkansas Baptist College in 2006, mm -hmm. facing challenges, I thought we could overcome barriers and overcome challenges, excuse me, was the same reason I looked at the mayoral race, but I realized there were too many moving parts for me to be involved in it in the way I like to do things. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I just realized that I wasn't a good fit for that position and, and, uh, and I would rather make first downs in the community with, look, with young people and kids like we're doing and help yeah. education. Like, like with Sixth and Gold, uh -huh. which we were talking about in our previous conversation. So with the four candidates that, that are vying for this spot, Vincent Tolliver, Frank Scott Jr., Warwick Saban, and Baker Curris, which one's going to win? I have no idea, you know, simply because... I, you know, I wanted to put you on the spot yeah, like yeah, that. No, <laughs> I, no, I understand. I mean, Little Rock is a very interesting place. I think you, you understand uh, many of the dynamics that are, that are going on in Little Rock. I think um, um, each has uh, a, a support base, you know, for within the communities from where they come from. But it's going to be real interesting to see how the dynamics play out uh, as, as the race comes up. What would you like to see whichever one of these candidates ultimately mm -hmm. ends up winning? What would you like to see them really focus on? Or maybe there are several things you'd like to see them focus on. Well, you know, I think 
every leader has really a passion in his heart about what they want to do. I mean, if from President Obama to uh, President Reagan or whatever, their their experiences kind of shape their agenda, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, so what I would like to see may not be what they want to do, but I think in order to make Little Rock a, a, um, a appealing city again, first thing we have to do is address the violence in our, in our city. I mean, let me give you a perfect example. Two months ago, I was in Brooklyn, New York, okay, with my son at basketball. And we, my family, we got turned around and trying to get to the metro. Mm -hmm. And so I stopped a guy in Brooklyn, New York, and I said, you know, we look like we're headed someplace we shouldn't be. Mm. And I said, hey, can you help guide us to the metro? And he said, sure. He said, y'all not from here, are you? I said, no, we're not. He said, oh, okay. He said, where y'all from? I said, Little Rock. He says, dangerous down there. Now, it's Brooklyn, New York, that's what he told me. So that's the perception of Little Rock in Brooklyn, New York. And we need to change that perception. And I think that I contribute to that by looking being Hey, in our Little Rock School District, hey, if our young people growing up, if we can, you know, improve on their behavior, keep young people in school, you know, what what the data shows that when kids drop out of school, they have a tendency to become involved in violence, keep them in school. I mean, you know, I work with the discipline committee, the family engagement committee on the state board. I think these are ways that I hope that the mayors, whoever the mayor will be, will look at you know, how can we decrease crime? How can we improve education? And the last thing is economic development, you know, in underserved communities. Because when the bottom rises, everybody moves up. Mm. You know, and I think when you elevate the bottom, everything goes up. So, when, so that's not being done now? Well, in certain communities. Mm -hmm. You know, I think you have, to, you have to look at certain communities to find, and that's what we did at Arkansas Baptist College. You know, that's why crime went down. I mean, contrary to what people Per perceive, I mean, crime went down 70% in the community because education went up, because we reached out to touch. That's what I hope that people look at from a holistic standpoint from our entire county. How can we make Little Rock become a model city and not one that somebody's saying something about in Brooklyn, New York? Oh, gotcha. Well, that is, <laughs> that, that's telling. Yeah. Um, I, I, before we end, I do want to ask you, though, about in terms of um, uh, some of what Arkansas, or what Little Rock, excuse me, is dealing with, the at-large board positions. You're familiar with that and what's going on with that. And, um, You're talking about from the city. For the city of yeah. Little Rock, yeah. The at-large position. Certainly there's a lot of talk, a lot of controversy on what should happen if the city should continue with the at-large positions or if, uh, if the city should be re redistricted. Right. Um, or what do you think should happen with that? Do you think those positions are viable or do you think it's time to move on and try something different? You know, Don, I really haven't done a, much investigation on that to to have to give an intelligent response. And I don't wanna just say something that I haven't really looked at because, you know, in, in a sense, I stay so tunnel vision. I know, see, you know, wow. Uh, uh, you know, like, like I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do this and, and I, I hadn't seen it. However, I, I, I've heard both sides of the coin and I think people have valid reasons for whichever experience they have, ex for whichever reason they have experienced that they want to change or they want to keep it the same. So I really don't know which will work out best based on uh, uh, the past experiences. I've just moved here 12 years ago. And so, and, and it's some deep history beyond, mm -hmm. beyond the years that I moved here. Well, I will say you answered that like a politician. <laughs> <laughs> Did I even get an answer? <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, you know, would you rather me just say I don't know? No, you know, no, no, yeah, you were just yeah. fine. <laughs> you, know, you were just yeah, fine yeah. with that. Uh, I, they, they do say that uh, in, in the Congress all the time now. <laughs> That's true. I, 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 so I don't see, you know. Would, you you would have fit in perfectly, yeah, no, right? No, but I'm not, I'm not the fit. <laughs> all right. Well, listen, thank you so much, Fitzhill, yeah. for being with us. Appreciate it. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Thank you for bringing up the, the false information. Yeah. That, because I, 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 I've never had the opportunity to address that. Well, you know what? This, that, that's what we do here yeah. at Terrell okay. Talk. We let yeah. people say what they feel. And, right. you know, I just ask the questions. Right. And you tell me. Well, and then I'll you. follow up. I might follow up with a tough one. But, yeah. uh, that's not, that's but, but you, you handled it well. Thank you very much. Good luck with Sixth and Gold. Thank you. Thank you. Come out and see us sometime. I will. We will do. And that's it for this segment of Terrell Talk. I'm Donna Terrell. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on Fox16.com.